Let's bring in Molly Sullivan. Molly? Hey, Mark. Thank you very much. You know the drill. Pass, space, and pace. The thinking from the Sixers' sideline is they can run any play. But if those three things aren't at its core, they don't have much. Tony Rose, in for MCW. Molly Sullivan now with Michael Carter-Williams. Mike, a balanced line in your first game back. What's been the key? Uh, I'm just trying to come in here and get comfortable. Uh, find the guys that are roping and still be aggressive. Your coach is always focused on the quality of shots, not the quantity. Going from good to great, how do you maintain that? Earlier, Ish Smith had a good laugh, thinking back to his first game as a 76er, February 23rd at Miami, where Brett Brown told him, hey, take off that tie, you're in the game. Tonight, game number 22 for Ish, starting 11 of them. And while he's been praised for maintaining a field for the gym, Wednesday at Washington was his second game in a Sixers uniform with at least 23 points striking a balance of attacking and running the show. With the sixth back-to-back -back of the season, Brett wants his guys to put on what he calls their big boy pants, and Robert Covington, for one, has proven to step up on the second of a back-to-back. -back. He's the team's leading scorer in those contests with an average of 20 points per game. Brett said the next step in his evolution is taking great pride in guarding active hands tonight, as Mark and Malik have detailed, and I'll tell you what, during timeouts in the huddles, what Covington says has teeth and substance, telling his teammates just now, keep making it hard for them, make them work for everything they get. Adam Silver, a busy man, and his latest stop is here tonight, and he is with our own Molly Sullivan. Molly? Hey, thank you very much, Mark. Welcome back to Philly, Commissioner. The last time we sat down with you on Comcast Sportsnet, your character has been tested in this young season, and you told me, look, we're never going to get used to losing, period. With history chasing you, what gave you the confidence to come out here and perform and ultimately win? Got to be Hollis Thompson, Molly. Yeah, you got it, Mark. Hollis, you're shooting 10 of 14 from deep over the last three games after going 1 of 10 in the previous three. What's changed? Um, you know, I'm just slowing down, taking my time, holding my follow through. Timmy's doing a great job of finding me. Your confidence shooting the rock is clear, but how is the other end of the floor and your commitment to defense factored in? And at the end of the third quarter, Mike, up against some serious smash mouth basketball. Your coach implored you to get a little angry out here, looking at that tough bucket with nine seconds on the court. Were you a little angry out here? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Brett Brown has indicated that his greatest challenge this season will be keeping the locker room together. The Sixers roster continues to be a fluid situation as they work to find NBA keepers. And Brett said, while they're here, we're going to help them, adding that the cornerstone of anything purposeful is how you treat people. Case in point, former Sixers Brandon Davies and Darius Morris spoke about exactly that pregame, thanking Brett and his staff for making them better players. Nerlens Noel told me, hey, these are the guys I roll with. We're all around the same age. We have each other's back. So sometimes, Mark and Malik, it's bigger than basketball and the players on this Sixers sideline are certainly benefiting from Brett's approach. When you speak, Jason, guys, listen, at the end of the third, you told your team, hey, wake up. We can win this game. What was the key? The collision of reality and patience. That's how Brett Brown described the current stage for both teams on this floor. And with the Celtics only two and a half games back from the eighth playoff spot in the East conference. Thank you, Mark. Ish, to be given the ball in late February and told, hey, run this team. How would you assess the challenge of that and the progress you've made in maintaining the feel for this gym? Not only a homecoming tonight, Jason, for you, but the 14th game back after more than two years away from the game. What are you fighting for? Together we built so much more than a slogan, and I'm guessing that this is just another example of what you guys are trying to accomplish. It is, Molly. I would like to see Molly Sullivan on the billboard tomorrow. And if you buy a ticket, it's not too late. We love our viewers at home, but we also want you to come out and, and, and be at the foundation of what you're building here. Yeah, let me show it. Oh, get this on camera. Nikki and JR, you got to get this on camera. That is A little shout out to my man, Nerlens. We're excited to have him on the court. We are rolling and ready to go. It's just so wonderful what they're, they're backing the Sixers and they're playing. A little bit in terms of being an underdog, perhaps not the right word to use for you when you walked off that bus in fall of 1961 in Chapel Hill. Dean Smith said you didn't pass the eye test, but you got the job done. So you got a bunch of guys on this floor that are really trying to prove themselves. Youngest team in the league. What's your message to them in terms of what they can expect this season? Mark and Malik know it's coming. Ready, fellas? Go Heels. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, back to you. Listen, Molly, we could just feel that from here. You didn't even have to say that. We knew that they were getting that whole North Carolina thing. Coming off their first victory over a Western Conference opponent, and the newest 76er, Larry Drew, spent the entire team flight to Detroit last night watching film with the coaching staff. Brett said, hey, there's no time to groom him. It's that ready, fire, aim 
mentality, Malik's favorite reference. Let's start with this. When Michael Carter-Williams scores 20 or more points, the Sixers have won four straight. But on Saturday at Utah, MCW went two for 20, telling me after the game, I won't forget this moment. Now, Brett had a choice. He could have told him to take a seat, cutting his night short, but instead felt it was important for Michael to experience it, telling him, hey, you got to be all in. After knocking down your third shot from deep early in the fourth, the scout sitting next to me literally sighed. He shook his head and wrote down some more notes on your outside shooting. But if you're writing your scouting report, Rob, what does it say? Uh, the Sixers' defensive rating climbed all the way up to 11th in the league. And for the month of December, the Sixers ranked fifth. In that last time out, they continue to focus on the basics. Get back, talk early and often, play with purpose, with energy, knowing that defense is self-correctable. Brett wants his guys to be proud of that end of the floor. They want to continue to disrupt time and space. Brett looked up at the scoreboard, Mark. He shook his head. He said, all right, fellas, 15-point game. Keep running. Good idea, Molly, and that defensive rating, Malik. She got Nerlens Noel, Terrence Jones on the floor. What's your early assessment? Terrence missed a bunch of one-foot bunnies. Wait till I see him after. It's good to see Nerlens. He's healthy. With the Sixers up by six, we welcome you back inside Wells Fargo Center. And when you hang out with the three of us on Comcast Sportsnet, we like to share how the NBA cares, that it's often bigger than basketball. And perhaps no one on this floor exemplifies that more than Ryan Anderson, devoting his life to a number of suicide prevention programs after losing his girlfriend in August of 2013. He called it the most painful experience of his life. Anderson said if people need to put a face on suicide prevention he's all in adding that the alternative would be to tuck himself into a corner but instead uses his platform to educate others on depression the bottom line guys you're not alone everyone we meet is fighting a battle number 33 doing his part to make a difference mark and malik molly a great story and well done and we thank you so much for that everything that we have been through you've now started your past 20 games played what did the sixers see in you that the other 29 teams didn't uh, they see a player. Larry drew the second to a 10-day contract, and I spoke with his former teammate at North Carolina, Harrison Barnes, who said Philly's getting a high-character pick-and-roll point guard who can probe the floor and find guys. His IQ, Barnes said, will make it easier for him to hit the floor running and make his presence felt. Molly Sullivan now with more on Sixers turnovers. Molly? Yeah, Mark. Brett told his squad, listen, our pace can be fool's gold. If we're going to be young and reckless, we better be good at it. And with that said, a lot of the focus here on the Sixers sideline has revolved around appropriate help where a player makes a read and works to, in Brett's word, stunt the stunner, so something to keep an eye on. You had 31 minutes on the floor entering the fourth. That was your average for the first 11 games. How'd you make it all happen? Hey, you just got in the ear of Robert Covington. Can I call him Big Shot Bob? And you said, I got you. What do you think about his play here tonight? Oh, uh, he played unbelievable. Molly Sullivan, what do you got? Well, Mark, what do you say in the huddle? Down 24. I'll tell you what, the Sixers coaching staff continues to keep it real as they have from day one. Brett just told his guys, this has been a long night, fellas. Sometimes you have these, but take the next 12 minutes and give me something. They continue to shrink the game on the sideline for their players, giving them some confidence here in this final 12 minutes, Mark. Shrink the game. Thank you, Molly. On a 13-2 run, Brett calls that first time out. What did he tell you guys that allowed you to play the front runner from that point forward? Uh, Parsons was mistaken for the 12-time All-Star. You can see George Dave on his cup. Parsons' caption on Instagram, finally hitting some shots, and this happens. Go figure, Mark and Malik. Molly, you're a coffee aficionado. Do you ever use another person's name, or do you just always use your name? I don't know. I, I guess if I was going to be mistaken at a coffee house, I would like to be mistaken for George Clooney's wife, Amal. <laughs> I'm obsessed with her. Or Michael Jordan. Same, same. Right, guys? <laughs> All right, Mark. Thanks, Coach. You held Cleveland without a field goal for nearly four minutes midway through that second quarter. What was working for you? Look who I found courtside, guys. Jeremy Macklin, the NFC Offensive Player of the Week, having a career year which quarterback the last Sunday's win over the Texans. You played with a number of QBs. How does Mark Sanchez stack up? You throw it down with authority to take the lead. Three seconds on the clock, and Robert will turn to you. And at the end of the third quarter, your head coach told you guys, pace is going to determine this one. How were you able to keep the Nets in check? 
you don't know, now you know. Robert Covington, congratulations. We'll see you tomorrow for Indiana. Thank you. All right. Forcing the 13th turnover. You put your team up by two. Your commitment to defense. What's the key? Um, you know, coach has been preaching defense since I first got here. Brett Brown has praised your ability to spread the floor, like you said, but also you're making strides as a defender. And tonight with Luke out, Typically, he gets the heavyweights, but you did a nice job on Mello. Molly, you have more on him. Yeah, it was that classic corner three. Looked a lot like his buzzer beater in game three of the Grizzlies' first round series with the Spurs a few months ago, but there's no question he still has the touch mark. His lower body, a work in progress. After off-season surgery, he removed the bone spurs in his right ankle, and on the sideline, you'll often see Vince use a heat pack, even massaging his ankle. And Molly? Well, Mark, the Sixers have now won three of their last five on the road, and when Brett was asked if it's easy easier for his club to play away from Wells Fargo Center. Fred said easy doesn't come into one thing I think about in any of our games. He went on to say yes, perhaps his guys press a little bit too hard at home. They want to give their fans what they deserve. The bottom line, Mark and Malik, the Sixers continue to believe if they bang out great days in the gym, they will add up regardless of where the scoreboard lights up. Let's bring in Molly Sullivan. Well, Mark, coming off a frustrating performance for New Orleans Noel against the Pelicans Monday, Brett encouraged him, as he does with all of his players, to participate in his own rescue tonight. Brett went on to tell us that, candidly, he's had to remind himself of the patience needed as they constantly throw New Orleans into the deep end. No other choice, really, adding, hey, I'm the king of wanting more, and we're always challenging New Orleans to play more minutes, find more energy, gain more weight. Let's look back to last night's decisive win over the Pelicans, where Nerlens Noel told us on Comcast Sportsnet, when you come to Philadelphia, you better come with full forces. He was looking forward to going toe-to-toe -to -toe with fellow Kentucky product Anthony Davis. Better ball movement starts with him. It's all part of being a point guard. And with that said, Brett told us how when he was growing up as the son of a coach, also playing for Rick Pitino, that if there was a problem on the court or even in the cafeteria, well, it was the point guard's fault. Michael understands that everything will be dropped on his doorstep, Markham Leak. The fact is the Sixers are 29th in the league with 20 assists per game. And Mike's learning how to navigate through all of this. Brett said, yes, our point guards need to know where to distribute, but guys also need to command the ball. So to much is given, much is required, a lot of responsibility for the reigning rookie of the year. Thank you, Mark. And Coach, you rally 10 down to take the lead, your highest scoring first half of the season. How has your defense been able to set the stage? They keep emphasizing on the sideline, Mark, and Malik catching guys in early offense because their release points are so quick and so high, they need to keep Keep them within touch distance. They can't give them any room. You indicated that you were a little amped up on Monday at Boston, that you were eager to show the city of Philadelphia the real number four tonight. Did you? Both the Pacers and the Sixers on the second of a back-to-back. -back. And after arriving to Philly late last night, guys, Frank Vogel said he caught the replay of the Sixers win at Brooklyn on Comcast Sportsnet. Stayed up watching until around 3 a.m. And what he saw, Mark and Malik, was a bunch of confident guys. Vogel went on to say how it's easy to crack and separate when you're losing, but that Philly has clearly stayed together, a testament to their character and their coach, Vogel said. Molly Sullivan, what more do you have on Henry? Well, Brett said he feels like they're far better prepared tonight and far more organized in terms of utilizing a smaller lineup, which is why he split up Nerlens and Henry to look at them more like five men. And, of course, Henry Sims at Atlanta Wednesday didn't play at all in the second half. It was all part of them going small. And Sims also went 0 for 3 shooting in the first half. And in an effort to get his stroke back, he was at shoot-around an hour early this morning with assistant coach Billy Lane putting up shots. He said, whatever coach needs... I'll be ready. I asked him this morning, how do you prepare the youngest team in the history of the NBA for what is indeed the oldest team in the league this season? He said, hey, we want to empower our guys to play hard and not worry about making mistakes. We don't want them to play scared. Brett said we'd much rather go down kicking and screaming than be tentative. They may be young and reckless, but the Sixers coaching staff believes they can use that as an advantage when channeled the right way, telling them it's not how well we play, it's how we play, Mark. Yeah, it's a good point, uh, Malik, by Molly. I'm that said, how about your Kentucky Wildcats looking to become the first undefeated team since 1976? What's your prediction? Um, you know, I didn't even fill out a bracket. I just put the champions from Spock, Kentucky. Maryland, you want respect. You've said that. A team that fights and reflects the city of Philadelphia. Is tonight an indication of who you guys can be? 
Tonight is definitely a night, you know, where we represent Philadelphia well. And finally, this sure doesn't look like a 14-win team. And how about the fans that came out here tonight to have the city back you and navigate through the highs and lows this season? What, how do you best describe that, Luke? Amazing, man. Uh, all season long, you guys have been great. We really appreciate you guys for the bottom of our heart, man. It's been a tough season, but we fight every night, and that's because of you guys. So thank you. How about number 12? Congratulations. Mark and Malik, back up to you. Molly, a great job to give Luke Ba'amute the opportunity to speak personally to the fans. We'll have more from that later in the show, but coming up next, it's Sixers basketball, Mark Malik, me and you.